Hello and welcome not to the review of a bike, but instead the review of a clutch. Now I know that sounds extremely boring and you're probably already thinking about closing this window and going over to watch a video of Logan Paul or Taylor Swift or something, but if you stick around, we will show you that this might just be a bit of a game changer. It's Honda's e-clutch system. It's first available on this, the CB650R, and that's the CBR650R. As always, great bike names that just roll off the tongue. The problem is it's a bit complicated. So if I attempt to explain it now, it's gonna take me about 20 takes. And I mean, look, it's a nice day. I, I might go for a swim or something. I don't wanna go through all that. So instead, what we're gonna do is voiceover Matt is gonna pop in in just a moment and he is going to explain everything. The system revolves around two motors which are controlled by something called the MCU. No, not that MCU, this stands for Motor Control Unit. The MCU gleans information relayed by the ECU, including shift pedal load, gear position, throttle position, and wheel and engine speeds, plus a rotational angle sensor for the clutch plates and the engine counter shaft. When the MCU decides that the clutch needs to be engaged, the clutch plates are actuated via the motors and a series of gears and it's an operation that's said to take learnings from the fine motor control of Honda's Asimo robots. Yes, really. During upshifts, the ignition timing and fuel delivery is adjusted much in the same way they would be if you're using a quick shifter. Only here, the clutch is half opened, reducing what's known as shift shock. That half opening also happens on the downshifts. The results are shifts that are smoother as well as 20% faster. Right, are you still following? Good, because we're not done yet there is still a clutch lever connected to the clutch via a cable. Pull it and something called a split shaft bypasses the fancy e-clutch stuff. And hey presto, your CB650R or CBR650R is like any other conventional manual gearbox motorbike. Thank you very much, voiceover Matt. Now back to here and now, it's worth pointing out that this system on these bikes is only charged at a 100 pound premium. Is it a bit of a no brainer or is there a reason why you might not want one? Well, I think we should go and ride it and find out. So here we go. We are on the CBR650R currently, but obviously you can have this on CB650R just like that one. This little light here means that E clutch is currently on, which means I can, well, it really feels weird, start it in neutral. And so because the E clutch light is on there showing that the system is on that means i can with all confidence put it in first gear and i won't awkwardly rock forward because yeah it's not a normal manual there you go well, i was expecting it to be kind of like a dct when you first pull away where you you get that sort of moment where the clutches are, are slipping and you sort of it takes a little bit to, to engage which I'm, i've never been that keen on especially if you're like a big tall adventure bike i just want to kind of get going i don't want to be sort of wobbling around waiting for the gearbox to engage but this I wonder even if it goes a bit too far the other way, which I think it might might catch a few people out. They might just sort of find themselves uh, going off the line a bit more eagerly than they were anticipating. You can still feel the changes. I think there's still a kind of feeling of engagement here. As for the rest of the bike, chassis is much the same as it was before, which is to say nice balance between kind of comfort and sportiness. But here's the thing, I know I can always, if I want to, I can still pull the clutch. Silky smooth shifts. Silky smooth. What I haven't done yet is play around with the modes for the shifting. So you've got soft, medium and hard. Yeah, I don't find myself missing having a conventional quick shifter. It goes really nicely with this engine actually as well. I think, well, yeah, I mean, you, you can probably gather why they've gone for these two bikes for the last kind of five or six years. For most of those years, it has been Honda's best-selling bike and has top various lists for just bikes in general but yeah i would quite happily have this on a hornet or maybe even the new cb1000 hornet when we get that yeah i mean this has always been a very appealing bike it's it kind of nicely bridges that sort of old school super sport world with modern comfort and sensibilities you know whether you're a noob or someone a bit more experienced you'll get on with one of these very nicely so to stick this gearbox on it, I think, yeah, makes perfect sense. With the e-clutch, I didn't feel like I was missing anything compared to having a manual with a quick shifter, but gaining quite a lot in return. 
The thing is, where quick shifter changes can be a bit lumpy at lower revs and lower throttle inputs, the e-clutch will shift just as smoothly as it does when you're going full gas. The only other thing worth noting is that the system does add a bit of width to the right side of the engine case, which does look noticeable when you're looking down the middle of the bike. But once you're riding, you stop thinking about it. The other day I was talking to a chap who bought an NCX 750 with a DCT because he has arthritis in his left hand and so he can't ride a manual anymore and that's why he bought that bike. But here's the thing, he could have one of these and there are loads of other people who have difficulties with their left hand, clutch levers are a bit of a problem but ain't nothing wrong with their feet, so now they can still have a manual. And this tech, we think, will probably make its way throughout the Honda range. It's looking like probably DCT will stick on the kind of bougier, expensive stuff. Think, you know, your Africa Twins and your cruisers like Goldwigs and stuff like that, where it makes sense. But on the kind of lighter, sportier stuff like this, and perhaps, you know, the CB750 Hornet, or the CB1000 Hornet probably as well, it's surely only a matter of time before this system is available. As far as we know, technically, you can kind of put it on anything, but it just opens up the option to people who either have difficulty with their left hand or maybe they just can't be asked with a clutch lever because let's be honest, it's not exactly a fun part of motorcycling. And the thing is, when we were sort of doing the first bit of this ride, kind of making our way through Marseille where there was lots of traffic, lots of filtering, it was great. It was just made everything much easier. There was less fatigue. But the weird thing is, I thought I was going to be reaching for the clutch lever all the time just out of instinct but the system is so good and so seamless that you kind of get in tune with it really quickly and I think only maybe once or twice I went reaching for the clutch and I didn't need to and when it comes to the upshifts and the downshifts they're really smooth but they still make you feel like you're involved in the process and it's still very engaging so yes it does feel like a bit of a no-brainer and it's gonna be really interesting to see what Honda does with this now what I also had in mind was those earlier DCT bikes which weren't always the best received but over time Honda has taken that technology and, and tweaked it and made it better. But this is great out of the box. You know that Honda isn't going to leave it alone. There are going to be continual updates and little tweaks here and there, so it's only going to get better. So yes, maybe it is a bit aggressive off the line for my liking, but this system is only going to get more refined. So there you go, a review of a clutch. Hopefully not as boring as you expected. Now, if you enjoy this video, please do like and subscribe to Visor Down. Don't worry, we don't just talk about clutches. Now, if you want some news, reviews, and features of bikes, please do also go to visordown.com. Goodbye.